Hello everybody, Kane here today with another little Jurassic World Reborn exhibit build. Today we'll be building the Beelzebufo uh, exhibit, uh, which for those of you who don't know is basically a giant. Uh, is it a toad or is it a frog? I don't actually know. I'm going to assume it's a frog, but I could be wrong, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, I decided to make a bit of a semi-aquatic exhibit um, just because I thought that would be really cool, but also uh, sink it down into the ground and make it a bit of a an underground viewing area. Why? Because I thought that was cool, and it is cool, and it fit with the uh, the Rook Ops exhibit a bit. But yeah, as you can see here, I've outlined the basics of the exhibit and started setting up the pathway and the uh, the glass window frames, and yeah. I think I sink it down... Is it two blocks or is it three? I think it might be three blocks I sink it. But yeah, it ends up looking really cool in my opinion. Uh, really happy with how this turned out overall. I thought... I thought it was pretty interesting, and for those of you who might ask, yes, and I I know I already mentioned this in the exhibit tour, but the next couple of exhibits will be the, uh, I believe the Crassigerinus, the Diplocalis, and possibly Mawsonia, which might get thrown in here as well, because I think it could kind of fit with what we're doing. Um, but yeah, the goal is basically I want to create this big underground viewing area for a bunch of swampy exhibits that have underwater viewing areas because I thought that would be really interesting, cool, and different from what I've done in the Dino series where we built the big bug house that had all the uh, the aquariums in it. Although I guess it's also very similar in a certain way, but whatever. Um, now this exhibit kind of, it's, it's funny, um, watching these builds is kind of weird. Because sometimes I watch them like a day after I've made them. So I, I still remember how I built the thing. And then it's weird going back and watching what I've just built. And being like, oh yeah. Yeah, no, this doesn't stay like this at all. Like this completely changes in about like 10 minutes or whatever. And then it's kind of funny watching the whole build come together. Because it's like, you know, you already know what's going to happen. So it's kind of weird seeing just how much the build will change so quickly. Um, which with this build is just insane that uh the actual exhibit itself changes pretty dramatically i'd say uh from now till when i finish it uh lots of uh <laughs> yeah it just kind of kind of changes immensely with the size of the exhibit and how the exhibit's set up with the amount of land i throw in and how the land is shaped and all this kind of stuff uh it's yeah again just very different from this so it's kind of funny watching you know, the, the time lapse back and seeing just how different this looks from the end product. Um, but yeah, there you can see me throwing in the, uh, the pathway. Now I kind of regret doing it so er doing that so early on because I ended up throwing stone texture in here and if I had just left that as grass it would have been a lot easier for me because, you know, then I wouldn't have had to worry about uh, messing up the uh, pathway texture when I did all the stone walls. Granted, I could have also just switched out the stone pathway for the uh, for a wooden pathway, which is what I'd originally thought of doing, but I decided not to do that because, well, I don't know. I, I think I felt like uh, keeping it as the stone path would actually fit a lot better for a cave exhibit than uh, keeping it, or like making it a like wooden board path would, but I don't know. I think it still looks cool overall. You guys will get to see a much better view of that. Uh, when I actually show off the exhibit. Um, but yeah, now you can kind of see, so the idea here had been, I was gonna do like a raised up land area with a waterfall going into a lower land area with a waterfall going into the main pond. And then I scrapped that because that was too much work. And then just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of an odd thing I ended up doing, I think, but it looks cool in the end. And to be honest, I kind of realized pretty quickly I don't need to worry too much about the uh, the actual walkable land on this exhibit, because A, the Beelzebufo don't really leave the water, and B, you only really see the underwater view from the viewing area, so the, on land, the above water stuff doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so I ended up filling it up with a bunch of willow trees and leaves and grasses to kind of give it some color, but also, you know, make it so it looked at least somewhat decorated. Uh, and there you can see my grant mess up once again with the Builder's Wand. Although, to be honest, I feel like more recently a lot of these mess ups, quote unquote, have actually been pretty helpful in just kind of making new terrain look better in a way than I had intended it to. <laughs> and it's actually kind of fun because then I end up with uh, new designs I hadn't thought of. Uh, but there you can see me throwing in, I think that's called dried sand from uh, Biomes of Plenty. I should have thrown mud in, but I didn't even think of that. 
I really should have thought of that, because I always throw that into a lot of the, especially in Wildlife Park, I've thrown that into basically every water-based exhibit we've had, or even, I should know, in just every body of water I've built in that zoo, pretty much has mud in it. But that's because mud is a great block for, uh, for making that kind of stuff. It looks really good. But yeah, like I said, the water's pretty deep in this exhibit. Uh, goes pretty much all the way to the top of the viewing area. There is a, I think, one block, yeah, there's one block of glass above the water level, but you don't really see that much through it because of, uh... So you guys have seen in previous builds I've done, especially in Wildlife Park, I, I like lily pads a lot because I think they make water look way better. Um, but I may have gone slightly, slightly overboard on this build uh, and thrown in uh, one or two thousand too many lily pads. Um, that wasn't until I accidentally deleted all the lily pads, but uh, then I brought them all back. But yeah, just because, why not? You know, it's it's what I do. Um, there is a funny mess up with the command, of course. You know, the uh, the one I usually use to mix up the stone texture, because instead of doing that, I just uh, told it to replace the entire area with stone. You guys will see that in a second. I don't know why I'm talking about it now. Um, but yeah, I instead of replacing the stone, I just deleted the entire build. Luckily, World Edit has undo, because... Man, I would lose so many of these videos if that wasn't the case. Uh, yeah, pretty typical rock wall structure. Um, you guys will see in the build uh, review, I've uh, I've connected it up somewhat to the Rugops exhibit, and I'll continue to work on that. Granted, I think my philosophy with designing this whole... Uh, the few builds we have and the fact we're stringing them together now into a bit of a zoo. My philosophy is the same as Wildlife Park, where I don't need to decorate absolutely everything and absolutely complete every single build, because at the end of the day, from a pathway perspective, you don't see most of this, so it doesn't need to be absolutely polished. And yep, there you can see me uh, starting to go a bit uh, crazy with the lily pads, kind of throwing a few too many in, but it looks really cool because you have all the lily pad roots just dangling down into the water, and it really, I don't know, it really just uh, adds to that swampy kind of feel I wanted for this build. Um, but yeah, throwing a few grasses in, a few reeds, um, I think I threw the willow trees in pretty soon. Or I try and do the rock texture, I can't remember which order it was in. Uh, oh, leaves, uh, some rock texturing, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, yeah, I think I was doing this more, well, to make it look better, but also to make sure I blocked off any areas that Beelzebufo might try and escape from. Although, for the most part, I haven't really seen them leave the water. Oh, there's the uh, willow trees. Man, I've, I've had a lot of fun with this dynamic trees mod. It's it's a lot of fun, and I think in the future, if I make another survival series, I'll probably include it, just because I've rather enjoyed playing with it so far. Um, but yeah, I think... Oh, is this, the, is this the entire exhibit about to disappear in 3, 2, 1 kind of thing? Oh, it, yep, yep. Oh no, oh no, here it comes, people. And da -da 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 -da. oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> and there went all my lily pads. Uh, but yeah, we got the rock texture in, and then I just spammed the lily pads all over again. Unfortunately, it also deleted all the algae and the uh, reeds I'd placed in, so I had to go back and throw all that in. But uh, yeah, aside from that, I think that's all I did. So uh, I'm gonna leave you guys here, and I'll catch back up with you guys in the exhibit tour. All right, everybody, here we are with the exhibit tour. Um, as you can see, I've uh, decorated the area up a little bit. We've got the, uh, I don't know what is up with the shadows. Something weird's afoot. It's kind of odd, um, but yeah. We got the uh, we got the Beelzebufo sign up here with a nice bit of blue concrete behind it to make it look a bit nicer. I might need to move this over to like here, I guess, because it kind of hides the Rugop sign. Of course, we could also move the Rugop sign up to like here as well to give it a bit more, you know pizzazz, I guess. But anyway, coming in here, as you can see, I've also put some lighting in using sea lanterns and iron trapdoors, and walking in here. Look at that. I like this view. I, I really like the underwater view for this thing. I think it's quite cool looking, and I think uh, if I quickly... Invisibility, night vision, and we'll get a bucket of milk as well. Why not? Um, well, if I can properly play the game. 
There we go. You get a bit of a better view into the water. And yeah, I like this. I think I think the algae and, and like everything else, especially the lily pads, really gives it a really cool tropical swampy kind of feel. I really like this. Um, but yeah, we should quickly fly up and go in here and show you guys what it looks like from above. Um, pretty typical kind of swampy exhibit. We got all the lily pads in here. We got, what are these? These are the calamites, which yes, I did realize um, <laughs> in between the time lapse and now. Uh, yeah, calamite logs are Cambrian, not uh, not Cretaceous, which means the Beelzebufo shouldn't have these. But the other exhibits that we'll be doing in conjunction with this, yes, you've already heard, you heard that correctly. Uh, the next two exhibits are probably going to be Crassogirinus and Diplocalis, just because I want to create the uh, the underwater swamp tunnel thing. And maybe Mawsonia will go in here too. We'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, we use these willow trees. I really like them. Dynamic trees really makes these super cool looking. Um, they're in a bunch of vines. And yeah, overall, this exhibit just looks really, really cool. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, and yeah, I think that's about all I have to say for now. So yeah, uh, we'll be coming back with another video pretty soon where we try and finish off a few more of these. Oh, also, I don't even think this was showed up, but uh, I put some glowing mushrooms in. They don't actually glow, I guess, but they look really cool. And I might put more mushroom and vine type stuff in here to really give it that kind of cool... Uh, underground look slash feel but yeah anyway that's all I've got for you guys today so thank you all for watching I hope you've all enjoyed and until next time see ya